Today's scriptures speak about how David wanted to build a house for God, uh, and yet God promises that uh, David's not going to build a house for him, he's going to build a house for David. Indeed, he does in the body of Christ the Lord and in the body of the church. Uh, I welcome you all today, and if you'd like to greet your neighbor, uh, please do so now, who are members with you in the body of Christ. Thank you all. Not much of an announcement. I don't have anything special to say today. So um, anyway, let's prepare ourselves to celebrate uh, these holy mysteries. Thank you. Please stand. Come on. Good morning, one and all. As we gather today, again, we are here in the sanctuary as well as many members of our congregation and other visitors are joining us online, but we are of one heart, one mind, and one soul as we pray together. The Advent season has gone so tremendously quickly, we are already in the fourth Sunday of Advent, just five days short of Christmas, and so we continue to prepare our hearts and mind in watchfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. The Lord's grace and peace is with you always. And And with with your your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, that we might worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sinfulness, counting always on God's compassion, mercy, and forgiveness toward us. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray.
Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me, your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace. Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May be it done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's readings are joyful readings, and yet here in the midst of the pandemic and season of Advent with so much uncertainty in our lives, sometimes we can have doubts in our hearts and sometimes we can feel like God is far away from us. I watched a documentary in World War II once and there was an army nurse who in her diary had written, oh God, where are you? She was in the midst of experiencing all the pain and the blood and the suffering that the world could muster. 
That line has always stayed with me, probably because I've asked that question myself, sometimes my own life, although not in circumstances anything close to what she was enduring. Probably all have perhaps asked that question, perhaps some in here do now. Oh God, where are you? We place our trust in God, we count on his help, and as we should, that's good, and that's what we should do. But sometimes we just don't see how he is there. I think today's scriptures kind of speak to that a little bit. Especially in this time of pandemic, there are so many asking that question, oh God, where are you? And God, of course, is here with us. We, we know this. Faith tells us this. We know it in our hearts. But God's providence can be a mystery to us. His plans and his designs unfold slowly at times and in ways that are unseen and unperceptible to us. And if the stories of the Bible teach us anything, is that God does not forget his people. He does not. He does not forget his promises, even if we think that he has. All we need to do is to wait with faith, with the obedience of faith, to wait, and in his own good time, God will act. God will act. A thousand years before Jesus, King David reigned over Judah. David was a man after God's own heart, and under David's leadership, Judah flourished, or Israel flourished, the kingdom flourished. Our first reading today from 2 Samuel, we heard how David, having defeated his enemies and enthroned and secure in his own palace, turns his thoughts to God's house. It's bugging David that the ark, which was the locus of God's presence among the Israelites, it's bugging him that the ark is still in a tent while he's in a house. It'd be like us sitting inside of our house and having the tabernacle in back in a pup tent. It just wouldn't be right, would it? And so David decides to build a temple for the Lord a place for the ark. And it's a good and it's a pious intention, but it's not God's plan. Though through the prophet Nathan, God tells David, should you build a house for me to dwell in? I, it was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. The Lord reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever. Your throne shall stand firm forever. That is what God promises to David. That is what he promises Israel, that the throne of David shall stand firm forever. Yet within a generation, the kingdom would split and although the Judah's, David's kingdom throne would stand for about 400 years, it would eventually fall when the Babylonians sacked Jerusalem, destroy the temple, and put to death his royal line, the royal line of David. What about the promise, O oh God, where are you? Yet even after the fall of Judah, the Jewish people continued in the face of all that had happened to them to remember the promise made by God to David this promise of a son for David. For 600 years, they kept remembering and kept waiting. For 600 years, under oppression, they asked, Oh God, where are you? Enter Gabriel. At a backwater little village in Galilee, to a virgin maiden, and that's about as low on the social rung as you can get, besides maybe a leper. To the world, the archangel appears to an extremely insignificant person in an extremely insignificant place. And why? She is of the house of David. Here and in her, Almighty God would build his house. Here he would build the house of David. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus he will be called great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. The promise is now fulfilled. The line of David was not severed, but un went unseen. And now God, in his mysterious providence, is going to build the real royal house of David. 
not a palace, but the body of his son in which he would invite the whole world in the body of the church, which is his body. You sit here today in fulfillment of the promise that God made to David 3,000 years ago, proof that God keeps his promises. Brothers and sisters, God has promised to be with us to the close of the age. And to borrow a line from Dr. Scott Hahn, God is a father who keeps his promises. Have confidence. Jesus is coming no matter what you're going through. The pandemic will end. Lives will be built back up and restored in ways that we cannot now know or perceive. For God's providence is mysterious, is often hidden, and is frequently accomplished in the most humble of ways. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. At this time, we have the RCI members come forward, please. Let us pray. Dear friends, as Christmas draws near, we pray that you will be drawn even closer to the Lord Jesus. In today's gospel, we were given the wonderful example of the Virgin Mary's willingness in her life to carry the Lord with her. As you go forth to reflect more deeply on the word of God, we pray that God will implant the word deeply within your hearts, and we look forward to the day when you will share fully at the Lord's table with us. Now go in God's peace. Go now in peace, guided by the light of Christ, so you may be nourished by the word of life. Let us all lend voice to our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The angel Gabriel assured Mary that nothing will be impossible for God, and so we have the confidence then to bring our needs before the Lord, no matter how difficult they may seem. For the church that we may continually prepare our own house, growing in holiness as we build the kingdom of God on earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all nations may defer the use of weapons of war as ways to settle disagreements or or assert power and use diplomacy to resolve differences. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
For those who find the holiday season difficult to endure because of the death of loved ones, loss, or loneliness, that they may find comfort and hope in the Incarnation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. For non-Christians who may feel excluded during the season and for respect for those of other faiths or no faith at all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. That the people we touch may see the goodness and generosity of God in our works of charity and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That we remain safe and healthy in the final push for preparation for Christmas and New Year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the Mass intention of today, Joe Caldwell. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick in our community, Mary Ann Pankratz, Tony Tucci, Patsy Menendez, Juan Macias, Cindy Exton, Betty Wade, Johnny Jimenez, Nelson Jeter, <clears throat> Brad Bro, Jim Gleason, Tim Stoner, Orly Garcia, Linnell Day, Cheryl Rayberg, Rayberg, Edna Baldwin, Christine Pereira, Rick Gondon, Solomon Ward, Joel Germeyer, Pete Gallardo, Bernice Ulbricht, Raul Torres, Wally Whitworth, Robert Onofre, Eleanor Squara. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayers. For those who have died, Mario Morales, Joseph Celestino, Ricardo Salinas, Teresa Doigi, Walter Cahill, Samuel Sotelo, Albert Kotzer, Ted Renier, Kenneth Strachey, Chester Kotzer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Generous God, we thank you for all that you have given us as we prepare to celebrate the birth of your greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Continue to look with favor on us and grant the prayers we make through the one whose coming we long for, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Messiah. Amen. Amen. I am the servant of the Lord. Let his will be done. greatness to the world. My spirit rejoices in God, for he looked on his lowly servant, and every age shall call me Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all this holy church.
May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when at last he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us ever watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo and Michael, our bishops, the clergy, and all faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord is with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
mourns in lonely exile here until the sun of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you. To us the path of knowledge show And teach us in her ways to go Rejoice, rejoice shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O come, O Lord of might, who to your tribes on Sinai's height Ancient times did give the law in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you. The angel Gabriel from heaven came, his wings as drifted snow, his eyes as flame. All hail, said he, all lowly maiden Mary. Most highly favored lady, Gloria. For no a blessed mother you shall. Generations praise continually. Your son shall be Emmanuel by seers foretold. Most highly favored lady. Then gentle Mary meekly bowed her head to me be as it pleases God 
she said, my soul shall not and magnify his holy name. Most high Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so may we press forward all the more eagerly by the worthy celebration of the mysteries of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. I just want to remind everyone that our bulletin remains the major avenue by which we communicate with you in terms of the daily and weekly news that comes out for our parish community. And even if you're celebrating with us online and cannot come at this time, uh, you can get a copy of the bulletin by going online to our website and reading it there. It's actually posted early before the weekend, or you can get a paper copy when you leave the church. There are so many pieces of information in the bulletin this week. I have a regular pastor's letter with all of the updates of things happening in our community. I have a pastor's Christmas message, and we also have an acknowledgement of outgoing pastoral council members and new members coming on our council with a reminder of the mission of the pastoral council. And we have the Christmas mass schedule and the live streaming times that will be available to you who remain in your home. And once again, a reminder that we'll be having two masses going on, one in the sanctuary and one up in the Cana Ballroom on both Christmas Eve and Christmas Day at uh, different times. And so read the bulletin very carefully to know that. And because of social distancing, if we fill the sanctuary, then we'll move to the historic chapel, fill it, then we'll fill the Cana Ballroom and Room 151, and then we'll still have 300 chairs outside if we have a Texas Christmas with sunshine. So there will be an available space for everyone with sacramental communion who comes onto our grounds. Also, one of the announcements in the bulletin is that the capital campaign continues to do well We made another $250,000 down payment on our loan, and the original loan of $3,942,000 is now down to $781,000, thanks to your generosity. Now, two things regarding health. First of all, uh, we were asked by the county to work in a collaborative way with them and, and a company called MD Toxicology to make Uh, COVID-19 testing available to people by driving through on our property. So on the Upper Hill property here between, um, uh, what's the main street, Kronkowski and Highlands Avenue and the section behind the old rectory, under the oak tree, they will have drive-through COVID testing. If you want to use your insurance, you need a directive signed by your doctor to, to allow that to happen. You can pay cash of your own or if anyone cannot afford it, they can apply through the county for assistance. That will be starting tomorrow morning, 8 to 5 p.m., and going for at least two weeks. And secondly, the Texas Blood Bank has told us in what critical shortage they are of blood, especially O positive and O negative donations of blood, but all blood is necessary. And so they asked us to do another blood drive, an unscheduled one, and that will take place here on our property in the Cana Ballroom on January the 2nd from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And especially, again, if you have O positive or O negative blood, they are in a critical shortage, and as country would, uh, people would say, if you got that kind of blood, you got gold in your veins, so they need you very badly. There are a lot of other announcements in the bulletin. Oh, one more that I think I better make is that we have finally hired a director of music and liturgy, 
His name is Adam Olmos, and some of you may know him already because he has played music at both St. John Birchman and most recently at Holy Spirit Church, and he'll be beginning work here in the middle of January. And finally, our uh, you know, drawing for the raffle for the truck, the Ford F-150, and for all of the basket extravaganza gifts, those were all done on Monday, and the winner of the truck was Armando Flores. We couldn't read the ticket very well, and we kept saying Amanda Flores, but it was Armando. And when we called uh, his number to let him know about winning the truck, his wife answered, he wasn't at home, and I said, well, how could I get a hold of him? And she said, well, he's out shopping for a truck. <laughs> and I, I said, ma'am, you better call him and tell him not to sign a deal because he just won the one here at St. Peter's. So they were in, they were in tremendous need. <laughs> let us stand for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And be for